what I try to do for myself when I'm working with my uh, clients, with my farmers, and there is a problem, is to discriminate what is metabolism or metabolic problem and what is an inflammatory problem. And uh, I think both can be true in the same herd, in the same cow. So then it's additive. And welcome to the Dairy Health Black Belt Podcast. Um, we appreciate you joining us today. I'm Craig McConnell. I am at Washington State University, and, uh, and it's a, I am an associate professor of veterinary medicine extension. And it's our luck today to have Dr. Rick Hendricks with us from the Netherlands. Dr. Hendricks uh, is a DVM, he's a bovine practitioner, and since 1995 was a co-owner of a veterinary practice in the Netherlands. He graduated in 1992 from Utrecht University in the Netherlands, and for 12 years has been a board member of the veterinary knowledge cooperative Veerkracht, and as such has helped organize the Dutch Veerkracht Dairy Congress. And he's an author of the book Pathways to Health and Disease for Dairy Cows, which was published just last year. So welcome, Dr. Hendricks, we appreciate you joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. And um, our topic today is going to be uh, focused on low-grade inflammatory processes in dairy cow health and longevity and how they can affect metabolism um, from the standpoint of a veterinary practitioner uh, on farm. And so what I thought we'd start with is if you could sort of help us frame this question in the sense of what typical diseases or metabolic areas of concern uh, you might use to highlight such inflammatory processes. When I graduated in uh, 92, uh, I was taught uh, at the vet school. Um, hypercalcemia, for instance, is a, a mineral disorder. Um, and uh, hyperketonemia or ketosis is uh, a feature of the negative energy balance. Now, uh, in the recent years, there's been a lot of research published that there are that there is more to it than just the simple uh, monofactorial approach that i just explained in both uh, conditions there is low grade inflammatory processes which may also underlie um, ketosis and hypoglycemia so um, i was very intrigued uh, well, a few years ago um, by this kind of uh, research and um, then I, I, I noticed that if you uh, google for instance LPS lipopolysaccharide and you just add to it another uh, uh, search term and you will get a lot of hits and uh, if it's LPS with calcium LPS with NEFA insulin whatever you can find something so um, that makes it more interesting but also more problematic when you're as a practitioner dealing with uh, cows on a, on a dairy farm. Um, so what I try to do for myself when I'm working with my uh, clients, with my farmers, and there is a problem is to discriminate what is metabolism or metabolic problem and what is an inflammatory problem. And uh, I think both can be true in the same herd, in the same cow. So then it's additive. Wisenetics turns podcast airtime into brand authority. We don't sell ads, we elevate voices. Curious how far your voice can go to become a reference in the industry and attract more leads? Scan the QR code and discover how we can turn your expertise into unmatched brand authority. Let's transform expertise into influence, starting now sounds like it's complex i mean this is i i I like you was trained in sort of the monosyllabic way of looking at a a given disease instead of necessarily thinking across purposes so given that then if we're focused on like hypoglycemia hypoglycemia or ketosis um i guess do you have suggestions for refining the diagnosis of those cows maybe to 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 Draw the picture of my working uh, field. Well, the, the average uh, herd size in Holland is about 110 dairy cows. If I want to do extra diagnosis, is relatively uh, expensive on 
this size uh, farms. If you have like a 2000 head farm, then it would be more profitable. So um, uh, I don't do a lot of um, blood sampling. Um, and it has, one is the, 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 the financial reason. The other one is that, um, for instance, if I uh, draw blood for calcium testing, I have a calcium value of that cow f- on that moment. It doesn't say anything about the cause. It doesn't say anything about uh, the mechanisms that are activated in the cow to restore calcium balance, if they are activated at all. Um, so then I would have to have at least two parameters to uh, test in the blood. And calcium is fr- quite simple to test, but then if you want to have an inflammatory, if you want to know if there is an inflammatory background, I cannot think of a, a, a blood test that could identify um, uniquely um, inflammation. For instance, haptoglobin, first seven days, it will be elevated. Uh, TNF alpha, we cannot measure it. Um, Maybe uh, a, a, um, a promising one would be lactate, but I don't have uh, normal reference values for it. But lactate as uh, um, a metric for an activated immune system, uh, the Warburg effect. I don't know if you're familiar with that. So that would be something. But then, uh, then you have the 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 the, the, the um, inflammatory side. But maybe you would like to also uh, know. Well, you should know what is the level of vitamin D, for instance. Is the vitamin D system activated? And then you should measure the the 125-dihydroxy uh, uh, metabolite. So it's getting more complex then, and then we should not talk about the costs for the farmer. So what I then do is, in case of uh, hypocalcemia, um, clinical hypocalcemia, and what I'm saying now is how I deal with it. I'm not saying that's the correct way. If a cow goes down uh, and it's uh, within the first, uh, uh, maybe one day be- of the day of calving or the first two, maybe three days, and she goes up with one or two IV uh, treatments, then I would say it's a mineral disorder. But if you have cows that uh, don't get up, or they go down after three days of calving, then I, um, I, I, my opinion is that it's more the inflammatory part. So then, uh, for 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 treatment, it should be different. It is different, and for prevention, it's totally different. Yeah, I'm thinking as you're speaking. I'm thinking in terms of how you know we could approach and package up what you're talking about to uh, a new graduate coming at it from the day one competencies and focusing on that diagnostic piece, but really needing to think in terms of the external factors that might be influencing that. And so I guess that leads us to your suggestions for identifying those risk factors at the farm that puts cows at risk for the above mentioned conditions. And I want to frame this within the context of what I read in the prologue to your book, where you said that, um, I think I have this right, quote, we feel that the current approach of advisory work is inappropriate in solving and preventing health disturbances in dairy cows because it is based on cow performance, i.e. output, instead of the external conditions, i.e. input. The external conditions, that's uh, that's what I focus on then um, when I'm trying to figure something out in for prevention. For doing that, you have to know how the cow deals with those external conditions that input and i'm not s- suggesting at all that i really know exactly how <laughs> the cow will respond to those uh stimuli but um at least i try and then so i i, I try to identify um um yeah based on the clinical appearance of the cow uh, when she goes down uh, the hypercalcemia example um, do we have a mineral disorder? Do we have a, a, a inflammatory or both? Because if a cow goes down on day two and she stay down, she stays down for four or five days, or you call it a downer. In my opinion, uh, we have uh, the, the inflammatory part as well, and then you have to cover both uh, approaches. 
in prevention. So just to sort of wrap this conversation up then, if you were to view this through the lens of helping coach a, a new grad or somebody who's been doing this for a while but has been focused more on the individual animals as opposed to the population, would you have any take-home sort of messages for focus on these areas across the farm, the systemic or the systematic approach? Well, if I'm... If I go back to the days when I was a graduate student, a uh, long time ago, <laughs> um, um, I was taught metabolism uh, separately from physiology, separately from disease, and the disease uh, were taught uh, on organ or organ system base. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, it would be very good if in the final year of your uh, veterinary education um things would be combined yep. and the 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 the, the, the cross links would be made um and that's well challenging right. so um <laughs> yeah that's challenging and how to do that uh poof. yeah it's difficult it's i think it's important for me for instance i'm uh, uh upcoming months i have to uh give some trainings to vets um and one of the challenges is, is uh, there are some newly graduated vets, so they don't have the experience in the practice. And that right. would be helpful if you make then the connection with, for instance, metabolism. But that was taught in the second year of the vet school. So right, that's a right. long time ago. Right. And that's a, a challenge. And I'm, I, I just don't have an answer how to do that properly. But I think there is the... the that would be the, the 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 way to teach new upcoming vets to make the 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 um, the dull metabolism. At least I thought it was a very dull uh, semester to make it more lively. But then you have to make the connection with the field, and if you don't have the experience, yeah, right, that's different. tricky. Tricky, yeah, but it's difficult. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think though. Um, I think that's a great place to sort of leave off because even though that is a difficult concept to sort of tie together at the field level versus individual animal, et cetera, just thinking in terms of the relationships and the fact that the metabolic or the metabolism and metabolic disease states aren't in isolation is yes. in and of itself a really important take home. Yes. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure. This is great. Yeah, this is great and um, really interesting topic to sort of think about and focus on. So we appreciate you taking the time to do this. My pleasure.